Welcome to Downtown Sports. My name is Downtown Stephen Brown, and in today's video, are we in cap hell or are things just really tight against the cap? And this is what I'm specifically talking about, right? Next season is where a lot of people have a hard time visualizing how the Maple Leafs are going to get by with only having Morgan Riley locked down to a contract on the blue line. So today I'm going to try to break things down and put them into perspective because I even have a little bit of trouble seeing how they're going to do this next year. Now I know you pull out the armchair GM and everyone's going to moan and groan because woe is you, you think you know more than everyone else. But if I can make this work and I can get that cast space to within 200k and explain everything that I did logically and whatnot then Kyle Dubas can definitely do the rest well the first thing I did is I tried to project the salary cap and the way that I did that was I went back and looked at how much the salary cap has increased year by year by percentage this season it increased two and a half percent to 81 and a half million dollars so if it were to increase by two and a half percent again voila that's how I got the 83 and a half million dollar number and I'm going to try to work with a 21-man roster here, meaning that that leaves us with $17.1 million to sign nine players to round out this roster. So let's start with the first two obvious moves, and that's adding Timothy Villiergren and Rasmus Sandin to this roster. And one really important thing to note is that Nathan Horton and David Clarkson's contract will be expiring at the end of this season, which means that the Maple Leafs won't have to worry about juggling players on LTIR anymore, which would mean that it'll be a lot easier to add players with rookie bonuses to their contracts to the roster and not having to worry about incurring those large overage charges side note and a little bit of bonus for those of you watching Rasmus Sandin actually doesn't have any bonuses in his contract which is why I think he's a huge favorite to make this team out of training camp this season kid is sick so the next bit of business would be signing Travis Dermott to a contract and I messed around and found these players as a comparable to him they're all signed to one or two year contracts respectively and when you compare Travis Dermott to these players he's probably somewhere in the middle to the lower end of the spectrum and the reason why I say that is because he just hasn't played a full season yet in the NHL to really prove himself and he's not going to get that opportunity this year because he's going to start the year injured you never know, maybe he comes back from injury and rips it up, but that should work to the Maple Leafs' advantage come contract talks, and maybe they get him to a three- or four-year deal at a very reasonable number. Now, it's always going to be controversial when you give a player money or term, especially both when you're considering their age, but the next move that I'm going to be making is re-signing Tyson Berry. And what you're seeing up on the screen right now is a proposed contract of $8 million and six years which in an $83.5 million salary cap would work out to about 9.5%. And if you're paying attention to the third furthest column to the right, when we're looking at the comparable players according to cap friendly within those contract parameters you'll see the really important number there is the cap hit percentage of when these contracts were signed the highest percentage match is of course jared spurgeon who just signed that contract a couple of weeks ago and then in my opinion the next closest comparable is john carlson and then oliver ekman larson now that is a lot of money and a lot of term for a player that we haven't really seen play in a maple leaf uniform yet by all means he could have a really shitty season this year and that would change my opinion of him completely but everything that we've seen so far from Tyson Berry in his career suggests that he's almost a right-handed shooting Morgan Riley and you could sign me up for that any day of the week and for me as a long-term fan of this team it would just be a damn shame that the Maple Leafs finally got their top pairing right-handed defenseman and then he just walks out the door at the end of the season but I mean Mitch Marner might not have cared about this too much when you look at his contract negotiations but Kasperi Kapanen and Andreas Janssen sure did the way that the Maple Leafs are set up financially they can front load the crap out of any contract that they sign and that definitely does carry weight in a negotiation it bodes well for them and it could definitely get them a discount with a player like Tyson Berry and I said at the beginning of the video that I was shooting for a roster size of 21. We're at 17 right now with about $4.1 million left to go. Let's take an in-depth look at the forward core. This is more or less all of the options that the Maple Leafs will have at their disposal to fill out their fourth line. 
And you'll see here that a lot of the guys are signed for 750k because that's what league minimum is going to be next season. And if you want a spot on the Toronto Maple Leafs' fourth line, you're going to have to sign for league minimum. And of course, this list doesn't include the inevitable UFA signings that they'll make, which is just hilarious to me that they're going to have 11 plus players to fill out three roster spots. But I mean, all the power to them, the more depth, the better. Now you're going to notice that I had Ilya Mikheyev on an island of his own there and that's just because I don't know enough about the player to predict a second contract for him. He could be nothing and he could be something, but until we find out, he's going to be a question mark for me. Now for argument's sake, so I don't have to pick three of those four words, I just threw up three fictitious names making league minimum so that we can move on with the video. $2.7 million to go with two roster spots remaining. Now where we go with the roster next is really dependent on a lot of maybes. Ideally, one of Joseph Wall or Ian Scott will be ready to play between 25 and 30 games and then possibly displace Freddie Anderson the following year, but that's a big if, right? And Frederick Anderson is already preaching load management, and so you might want to go the route of signing a more experienced backup goalie and letting Ian Scott and Joseph Wall split the time with the Marlies and play as many games as possible. Now that scenario obviously leaves the Maple Leafs with less money to spend on that last spot for the blue line, but with the way that the backup position has been handled the last two seasons, it's just something that cannot be ignored. But I mean, who knows? Goalies are weird. But the more ideal scenario is having one of Scott or Wool step up and play 25 to 30 games in the NHL next season because that would give the Maple Leafs about $1.9 million to go out and get another defenseman. Whether that defenseman shoots left or right, it doesn't matter. Just get them on the roster. You can rearrange things and worry about the pairings afterwards. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, this was not meant to be perfect or serious whatsoever. All this video was intended to do was put the situation into perspective and illustrate that although this situation is tight and complex, it's not as bleak as some make it out to be. At the end of the day, the Maple Leafs are paying a lot of money to a lot of really good players and to me, that's always going to be a half full or half empty kind of problem and all it means is that they're going to have to be creative when it comes to filling out the bottom end of their roster. So to end off this video, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to throw up a list of video topics right here, and I'm going to let you guys comment down in the comment section what you want to see me talk about next. So click the like button and subscribe for more because more is always on the way. And guys, as always, take care.